So that's the reason uh, we think uh, HBM is a better option. And, uh, hybrid HBM is a better option. Okay. Now, there are, if we compare performance of uh, HBM and hybrid HBM, there are a couple of uh, you know, differences uh, in terms of utilization. Uh, this is kind of new. We found this recently. The reason is, uh, uh, recently we got the new hardware version of IO technology, for example, direct IO. With direct IO, we can assign, uh, for example, a 10 gb Ethernet card to get examples. Okay. Now, in a, a modified HBM case, typically it uses local epic upon end of, you know, at the end of an entrance, so called an EOI. Okay. And local epic is virtualized. Now, EOI, write to the EOI to the EOI register, causes VM exit. So each intra causes a VM exit. And the advanced Ethernet card, like a uh, 10 gig uh, by the Ethernet, typically requires MSI or MSIX. And those also require uh, masking and uh, mask operation to control intra. And that also, that would also cause be an exit because to ask you if this is kind of detailed, but you have to write to the so called NMIO area and uh, typically the implementation uh, use of uh, unmap that uh, area generated uh, BM exit. And uh, in hybrid, um, we basically power choice and that way we can avoid. Uh, EOI. Okay. So because of those, these are small things, we think, but uh, it tends to be sometimes a big thing. And for example, this Niantic, um, the number of intra per second is something like, you know, 10k. This is uh, based on the configuration and uh, These cards uh, typically have interrupt modulation. Basically, they can batch interrupt and into one. Right. So even this, this is actually uh, kind of optimized, optimized the number of uh, interrupts. So if you change, for example, this value, for example, if you lower, um, you will get more interrupts. Now, the implication of this is, as you try to batch more, you're going to have a latency. So if you don't want to see latency, you, you need to use a uh, smaller value. That really means you, you get point. Okay. So based on our measurement, um, it basically will get it we are getting like a more than uh, 3% per CPU is used for just a, this operation. Okay. Now the issue is, even we increase the number of CPU, the, these devices are so powerful. So even you have, for example, OB CPU, Still, in each seat you can get this many uh, interrupts. So, with hybrid, again, we don't need to get the VM exit, and uh, we can basically save 60% of our CPU cycle or interrupts. Okay. Now, we can use this uh, hybrid HBM for even down zero. Okay. With down zero, if uh, the hardware has an advanced virtualization uh, feature, we can 
again, done that in BT container. And this way, um, right? we get bin zero and bin three, and use Zen API, okay? and also use BTD IO drift IO. This way, I, we can get the optimal IO performance also. Okay. This is um, one usage for uh, you know hybrid even for the DOM uh, DOM cell. Okay. We haven't implemented, but um, probably in the future I think uh, this should be useful, and we may be able to fix some uh, you know conflict or you know. Um, Issues with the answer because the PCDA has no other support. The other thing is, uh, so with hybrid, which really means we have ability to extend existing HDM, okay? And virtualization, you know, in virtualization, even on native, sometimes, you know, for example, um, Something impossible in a native doesn't really mean uh, impossible in virtualization. The one, one example is, for example, live migration means to the OS, you know, what, what the uh, migration means to the OS? It basically means the CPU change at runtime. That doesn't happen on a native system. So that's a, you know, the meaning of live migration. <coughs> Now, the issue with live migration is you have to define your CPU pool with um, these common features, right? So, then if you, for example, live migrate to new hardware and new hardware has a more performance feature, for example, encryption or something like that, but you cannot use that. So we, we, see, we observe cases where, for example, uh, 30% difference if we use, you know, uh, the advanced instruction, for example. But uh, if we don't do that, we're basically missing that uh, performance in uh, optimization and uh, opportunity. This is kind of still research, but uh, for example, uh, we can do this uh, for example, Java VM, and if we send a notification to Java VM, an application will benefit from new, new features. Oh, okay. <coughs> so, uh, this is summary. Um, so, for cloud computing, Essentially, we need to minimize the overhead, the virtualization overhead, if we can. Yeah. And uh, also, we should try to enhance VM so that we can utilize the advanced and new hardware features as much as possible. That's the, I think, uh, something we have to do. And Zen um, has a, uh, you know, uh, very efficient API, and we should be able to use that in HBM. This is a great opportunity for us. And uh, if we use a hybrid virtualization, uh, um, basically, it's super set of um, um, HBM. So it's basically you can combine the binary for the native and TV and hybrid. So it's easier to support. And the current status is uh, we prototyped uh, actually Yang Shande and uh, uh, it today supports SM SMT and uh, SI and SIX and uh, we are gathering more data. So, uh, and we send the packages for 